Speaking of the progressive movement in America, I want to show you how much progress we are making in major cities all around the United States. The LGBTQIA+, four-leaf, clover, rabbit's foot, unicorn group, uh, the pagan sex religion of our day, is making great strides to, let's just say, class up major cities in America by public displays of nudity for all the world to see, especially young children. Now, I could have sworn that the argument back in the day was, we just want to do things in the privacy of our own bedroom. We want to be able to sit at the bedside of our dying loved one. We want to be able to marry just like you. We want to be on insurance with our spouses. That's all we want. Well, of course, back then we were like, let, you know, you're not going to redefine marriage, are you? Okay, let them do it. And of course, they redefined marriage. And then we're like, well, you're not going to you're not going to parade around major cities shoving your junk like your naked bare bottom in your privates in the face of kids, are you? <laughs> of course not. And of course, that's what they're doing. Now, I have to warn you, I want to show you these clips because I need the reality of what's taking place to set in. I'm going to do my best to block some of this out, but I myself am not the best editor on the planet, and I might miss something. But I do need you to see this stuff. So even if you don't want to see it, it's important for you to at least go over to Spotify and listen to the rest of the show. But here are some very disturbing clips of the different pride parades that have been going around our major cities in America and the indecent, disgusting exposure of mostly fat, disgusting people shoving their junk in the face of small children. So here we have in New York the Dyke March, which can't help but be just a smorgasbord of healthy bodies. And as you can see on the screen, there's a bunch of naked people dancing around in a, fount in a fountain. And then here, of course, you've probably seen this in the past in L.A., where the BDSM group in ha West Hollywood, I believe it was, decided to smack bare bottoms and whip people in public. And then, of course, here in Seattle, we have a disgusting group of men that would never be able to get sex from an actual woman, so they turn to other men. And here they have themselves riding disgustingly on bikes, which I hope are not rented by the city because nobody would want to sit on those seats after these totally fully naked men ride through the city on these bikes. Um, I have a joke about bike seats and gay men anyway, but I'll forego because it's probably a little bit classless on my part. But then here we have in this final clip, we have London Breed in the city of San Francisco lighting up the city street as though it was gay Christmas for all the world to see. And of course, we have drunken gay men cussing over microphones as they introduce London Breed for this festivious event. Check it out. Lately. But for those of you who live here, those of you who walk the streets of San Francisco, you can tell another story. You can talk about the story of San Francisco based on your own experience, based on love, based on acceptance, based on bringing people together. Because in San Francisco, we don't write laws to oppose our LGBT community. We cement laws in stone to allow people to love who they love, marry who they want to marry, end trans homelessness, and do all the great things that we are known for. So I'm really proud of this city and what we represent. And today is just another example of why San Francisco is so incredible and will continue to be a beacon of hope. London Breed! I don't know about classy, Manny. Now, for those of you who listened and didn't watch, essentially, I just want to tell you what you saw was, uh, what you would have seen is a pride flag that looks to be made with lights uh, stretched out over major, a large portion of uh, downtown uh, San Francisco, what, what is purported to be the largest pride flag in the world. I mean, you got to have goals. I suppose. 
Now, Mark Twain said, the coldest winter I ever had was the summer I spent in San Francisco. Well, he should have spent a summer there during Pride Month, and Mark Twain himself might have been converted to conservatism and started thinking, well, maybe things are going a little bit too far. And that is why I bring all of this up. The slippery slope that we're seeing right before our very eyes, I hope, does not miss us. While the progressives want to continue to, quote-unquote, make progress, they are willing to do so even if it means totally walking backwards in time and destroying all of the real progress that we've actually made as a society. The slippery slope here, of course, that I'm referring to is, among other things, the idea that when we redefine marriage, we are actually just making more room for people. Of course, back in the 90s when we were being pressured to redefine marriage, we, we had a sinking suspicion that this was actually the case, that, that we would find ourselves in the present position that we're actually in, that by destroying the definition of marriage, that you were actually after something much deeper, much more serious, and much more dangerous, that actually we might get to the place where this kind of disgusting public displays of nudity for young children might actually become permissible if we start redefining what sexuality actually looks like and is. After all, if you don't follow a biblical definition of what marriage is and what human sexuality is, then I don't understand why we really have a reason to put any stumbling blocks or any stopping points in, in, in the definition of words. Why can't a child marry an adult, which may be what they're after all along? Why can't a human being marry a horse and live in holy matrimony together with that, with that animal? Why can't you have multiple wives? Why can't you marry your cousin? Why can't you do anything? As long as you say love is love, then there is no real definition to these words at the end of the day. When we were fighting back in the 90s for the definition of marriage, we were making the argument not only that marriage as an institution is sacred and holy and cannot be redefined, but that if you redefine this, you will be redefining so much more. You'll be redefining the greatest of virtues. You'll be redefining love. And of course, now it's turned into gratuitous displays of public nudity rather than willing the good of the other, rather than a sacrificial virtue that wants what's best for people. Now what you want when you say you love somebody, apparently in these major cities, is to just shake your naked sack in front of people. And it's disgusting. These hobgoblins, these moral degenerates need to be put in check. And it won't happen until we actually get serious about speaking about and promoting real, authentic, moral values. Now, let me show you a clip from way back in the day that honestly is a little bit funny, but it will also help you understand the slippery slope that we are on and will continue to slide down until society gets even further down the toilet drain than it actually already is. So here's a clip from what seems to be back in the 1950s about homosexuality and about children making sure to be careful about it. Check it out. The following day when Jimmy finished playing ball, well, the man was there waiting. They stopped at a drive-in and the stranger treated him to a Coke. During their conversation, he told several off-color jokes. But Jimmy had heard others before and, well, it made him feel big to so easily win the confidence of an older person. The following Saturday, they went fishing together. By now, they were using first names. Ralph said it was more friendly. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested, but, well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, 
but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Now, I know that clip seems like it was from so long ago that it seems ridiculous, but let's really put this into perspective. Let's just say that it was made in the late 50s. So what we're talking about essentially is about 60 years, and we have gone from saying, hey, there may be people who have a predilection towards children that you need to be careful of to the point where we don't want to define anything in a logical fashion to the point where we say love is love and we are willing to just throw all of our kind of like cognitive usefulness out the window because now we don't even want to admit that these kind of people do exist and that we might want to protect children from them. I guess maybe more broadly, the real point at the end of the day is this, is that there is only one side of the aisle that truly cares about the sanctity of life. And obviously, the only concern falls on one side of the aisle because we have an understanding of what humans actually are. We're not just human beings with emotions and not just human beings with, with, with the ability to experience pleasure. We are moral agents that should desire the good and should desire what is right. And if you claim to be a Christian and claim to care about people, then you need to get involved in the fight. Even if it just starts with talking, start somewhere. Go further. Go serve somewhere. Serve at a pregnancy resource center or a faith-based organization. Go do something on mission. But friends, something has to stop the slippery slope of progressivism from continuing to win. It's about time we start to get serious about winning. And when we do, lives will be saved. If nothing else, those things called your eyeballs won't be burned out by this kind of disgusting display taking place in major cities around America. So if you at least care about your corneas, do something about that. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go with God. So you just got done watching a small excerpt of a much larger episode. You can find the link to that full episode down below in the description of this video. So you definitely want to check that out because if you like that clip, you'll like the much larger episode. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and click that little bell to be notified when great new episodes of Anything Hurt come your way. Thanks for watching.